Greetings on this beautiful Sabbath day. I would like to ask you a question. You don't have to answer it. All you have to do is if you believe that you are perfect, raise your hand like I am doing. Okay? <laughs> you believe you're perfect. Okay. Now, there are many ways of using the word perfect. A perfect idiot, all right? A perfect joke. But the fact is that when I give you the scriptures, you will realize that we are perfect. Now, your wife or your husband might not believe what I'm saying. Who? My wife? Perfect? My husband perfect? The minister perfect? Well, folks, when you study the Bible, you realize that God created you perfect. And he wanted you to continue being perfect. Now, so I want you to go with me to Matthew 5 and verse 48. Matthew 5 and verse 48. The words of Christ. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We have to be perfect as the Father in heaven is perfect. If you are married, you probably would not believe that. If you have taught, like me, uh, 35 years in the ministry, you will probably not believe that. It's, it sounds almost impossible. But God says, Christ said, that we must be perfect as the Father is perfect. Well, here comes a revelation. Well, it's not really a revelation. But uh, if you go to Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10, let me get there. And verse 14. You will see what the Apostle Paul said in Hebrews 10, verse 14. Okay? For by one offering, and we know that Christ offered his own life, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. You were all dirty with sins. Christ came and he died to restore us to the way that God created us. He created us perfect. Now, I want you, husbands and wives, and if you have enemies, I want you to meditate on what I'm going to say. Because when God created marriage, he did not create divorces, fights, horrible things, because he knew Christ knew that we were going to be bad, but he came to forgive us with his sacrifice. So next time a minister asks you, are you perfect? Please raise your hand because you are in the eyes of God. Perfect, perfectly forgiven. All the time. Now folks, uh, if you don't believe me, well, we'll keep studying the Bible and we will see. Uh, I want you to go to Colossians 1, verse 28. Colossians 1 and verse 28. Him, we pray.
preach Jesus, warning every man and teaching every man in, with all wisdom that the way that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Why perfect in Christ Jesus? Jesus is not living my life. Jesus is not there when I'm tempted by different things. Jesus is not there when I get upset with some people in the church and outside of the church. He is not there when people get mad at me. But He is. He has already died for our forgiveness, folks. And I want you to understand it's a very important topic. I have heard ministers in other churches that all they preach is hellfire and damnation. And those churches are full of people. So I don't know why. I have never heard a minister in other churches and also in our church preach what I'm preaching today. That we are perfect. We were perfected once regardless of what we do, if we repent and don't do it again, we are perfectly forgiven, folks. Now, I want you to go, and this is not gonna be a very long message, and Ephesians 4, okay? Ephesians 4 and verses 12 and 13. No, oh, did I say? No, I have to leave this. Did I say Ephesians 4? That's right. Okay. Well, when you got there, it says that Christ is doing us unto a perfect mind to the measure of Christ. Christ is making us into a perfect man, like he is. I imagine Christ, I'm going to give you a, an example. Let's say that Christ is painting a beautiful picture. And that picture represents each one of us. And somebody comes around and says, oh, I don't like that man, that idiot. Oh, oh, and then gets the picture all messed up. All Christ has to do is remember you, and all you have to do is remember that he already died, that his blood is actually the ink for our sins, that we are perfect, perfectly forgiven. And don't let anybody put you down. I went to a church in which Sermons were always corrective, always trying to get money, always trying to make you smaller than you really are. I might be small physically, but spiritually, I am not small, neither is anybody, because you have the love of God in your heart, and you know you are so important to God. You know you're so important. He told his son, Christ, I want, I want Roland. I want Roland. You teach him. I want Manny. I want the people that are sitting here, they call that ones, you know. Nobody can come to Christ unless the Father calls him and Christ will raise him up. We are here because the Father called us to Christ, who perfect us by forgiving our sins. And it's so, this message is so beautiful that if, I'm glad I'm recording it and I'm going to send it on, on the YouTube so that people out there can hear something else, something that, that actually explains the love of Christ, the love of God for mankind. 
you know, eventually God is going to have to destroy a lot of people because they don't want to repent. If you repent, if you repent, in the picture that I said that, that Christ is, is painting and, and you mess it up, the only requirement, if Christ could talk to you and say, have you repented of this? You sure? Yes, I have repented. You're perfect again. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? This is a, a message that uh, I wanted to preach for a long time, but for some reason, I have not done it. Well, I did it many years ago, but to the new church, I'm just going to finish my message with uh, a reminder. I want you to go to James 1, verses 2 to 6. James 1. You know what God uses to make you perfect? Can anybody tell me? Of course, His blood. But to make you perfect, I want you to listen to the words of James 1, 2 to 6. My brethren, Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. I remember my first wife many years ago. She became sick, very sick, and then lost her mind. And I remember, I see myself in the garage of the house where I used to live and my knees crying for her healing. I'm asking God, I'm crying practically every night. I cry my heart out, begging God, please, I want my wife back. Please, Father, heal her. Obviously the answer was no, because she died. But you know what that made night after night day after day of God saying no. You know what that made me do? It made me realize, after because I have already read this, this verse, that trials are necessary to make you strong in the faith. Because I know, I know that God always has something good for you. My first wife died and the Lord gave me a lady in the church who is now here, who has been with me preaching the gospel and guiding me and helping me and making sure that the wolves don't get a hold of me. And she would tell me, watch out for that guy. Watch out for that lady. Be careful. I, things I could not begin to notice. She has been my, my, my guard. And I'll tell you, God always, always blesses you, not only with forgiving your sins, but when you go through a trial, trials are good for you. You need them. Let's keep reading from 2 to 6. Uh, knowing that the testing of your, of your faith produces patience, and the patience have its perfect work. Well, you can read this. All of these things perfect you. God gives you trials to make sure that you are with Him because God wants you perfect, perfectly forgiven, but not sinning anymore. What if you sin again? There's always the blood of Messiah there. There's always the forgiveness of God God has a plan for you, and the devil is not going to defeat God. If you 
take the trials of faith that you have, God is with you. And if God is with you, who is going to be against you? And let me tell you something, folks. You are all perfect. And husbands and wives that will hear me on the YouTube, you're having marital problems. Please read that Bible. Please remember. Remember that God, the blood of Christ, made your husband or your wife perfect. And all you have to do is show each other the love of Christ. Yes, there are trials, but the blood of Messiah is always there. May God bless you. Thank you for coming here.